So whether you've been a graphic designer for a year or 10 years, you're gonna get fired. It's just part of the job. You gotta have thick skin if you're gonna be a freelancer, if you're gonna be a business owner. And today's video is about that. Why are your clients firing you? I wanna talk about the five things today. So without further ado, we're just gonna jump right into it. Let's go. Hey guys, this is Adrian Boysell and welcome back to another Adrian Graphics video. Today's video is about why you're getting fired by your clients. My job is to help you eliminate as many of the challenges and pitfalls in your business. And there are five things that you may have done. You, maybe you've done all of these, maybe you've only done one of these, maybe you've done none of these. If not, congratulations. But maybe you need some direction and some mindset from somebody that's been doing this for a long time. Now over the last 15 years, I can't even count how many times I've been fired and how many people I've actually fired. Sometimes you're gonna need to fire the client and sometimes the client's gonna fire you. It's just part of business, you can't take it personal, but it is an opportunity for you to take crisis and turn it into opportunity. So every crisis comes opportunity. So today I wanna talk about that and the first thing that you really need to be thinking about and where a lot of designers and a lot of business owners in general fail is setting expectations. So when you're first working with a client and they're explaining their project, it's very important that you take the time upfront to set the expectations. What is the turnaround time? What is the quality? How many revisions do they get? What is good design and what is bad design? What is different about the way you design versus other people? And what does your process look like? If you don't give the client this information upfront, they're going to be in the dark. And so when you're running a day behind or you have extra projects that fall in your lap, or things are going well and you're just bombarded with work, you have to be able to communicate these to the people and make sure that the expectations are met. If you don't meet their expectations, they're gonna start looking elsewhere to find somebody that can meet their expectations. So it's important that you set these properly right from the beginning and that you don't waste their time by just leaving them in the dark. The second thing that you need to be aware of and really be mindful of is the communication, incoming communication and outgoing. If you're having a hard time communicating with the client because you didn't set expectations and they're not responding to your calls or they're not getting back to you in a timely manner, this is gonna cause delays and it's gonna cause you to run over the timeline that you gave them. And then vice versa, if you're not following through and you're not answering the calls because you're bombarded chasing work and you're not taking the time to call them and update them, especially if you're gonna be running behind. If you know you're gonna run behind on a project, you, the moment you know that, you need to call them and give them the heads up and communicate. Say, hey, I need an extra day or I need an extra week. They're either gonna be able to make that decision then and there if they wanna pull the project or if they're gonna give you that extra time that you need. The incoming and outgoing communication needs to be on point. The other way that you can help yourself identify the communication gaps is understanding what is the best way to communicate with your client. Is it through text messages? Is it through emails? Is it through phone calls? This is also part of setting expectations. For me, I hate emails. If I get an email with one change and then I send the change back to them and they send me another email with another change, this drives me crazy and it's a major waste of time. So I tell clients upfront that I wanna have all of your changes in one email at once. Please don't send me 11, 12, 13 emails with a bunch of different changes. Send them all in one email so I can knock them all off my list and send them back to you. Your time is very, very valuable and if you don't communicate this properly, it's gonna cause friction and that's when your client's gonna fire you. So you need to get your communication on point. The third reason why you're getting fired by clients is you're just chasing the money or chasing the next project. You get the client, they agree. Let's say you set expectations, awesome. Let's say the communication's good. But then the major issue is you're chasing the next project. You get them to pay you and boom, on to the next project and boom, on to the next project. You're not putting the time, the attention or the detail into this project that it really needs. And so you're just chasing work, you're chasing money instead of chasing the end result, which is quality. So I want you to slow down. You can do that by charging more for the project and selling it on a value base instead of selling it per hour or per project. That is one way you can slow things down so you can do more quality versus quantity. And if you're feeling so bombarded that you're just chasing project after project just to get paid and you're not raising your rates, 
then it's probably time to start delegating work out to other designers. You can do this a number of ways. We've talked about this in many videos. You can do this on freelancing websites. You can do this within your own community. You can do this in Facebook groups, but start delegating these projects and start to document what it is the client wants and sending that stuff out to them that way. And that's gonna free you up to start focusing on the projects that are gonna one, pay better, but two, you'll be able to slow down and take more time to do the job the right way. No one in the design world or clients and otherwise need somebody that's just gonna check boxes. You need to take the time to slow down and make sure that it's work that you are proud of. If you're not proud of the work and you're just doing it for a paycheck or you're doing it for the next project, this is not a winning strategy. So I want you to focus on slowing it down a little bit more, taking the time to do the project the right way because your name is gonna be on that at the end of the day. The fourth reason why you're getting fired. You didn't qualify the prospect from the beginning. They may have said things that are red flags or yellow flags, and you didn't pay attention to them. You brought them on as a client anyway. There are bullies. There are nightmare clients. There are bad clients out there. So if they fire you in those situations, that's a good thing. You are saved from the nightmare. Not all money is good. If that money is associated with somebody who thinks that they can just tell you what to do and you're gonna be an order taker and you're just another provider to them, that is not good money. You wanna work with people who see you as a partner, somebody who are gonna treat you with your respect, that's gonna value your time, that's gonna value your creative talent, and that's gonna take that seriously. And they're gonna trust the process that you've learned, whether you've been doing this for a year or 10 years. You need to properly vet your clients and qualify them. And that's by asking the right questions. I just did a video about asking the right questions. This is really important that you qualify your prospects, that you make sure that they're a good fit for you and that your personalities mesh. Because there's nothing worse than bringing on a client, them nickeling and diming you on your price, making, wanting you to do everything yesterday, and then when you do it, trying to get you to do another deal or complaining about the project. And then if you don't wanna do that additional deal that they're asking you to do for free, then they write you a bad review. And those kinds of people never give you referrals, by the way. So you wanna make sure you're finding the right clients. If you're getting fired by clients, then there's a chance that it's probably because they're not the right client for you and they're just a bully. So make sure you qualify your prospects, make sure you go through that process thoroughly and ask the right questions. The fifth reason why you may be getting fired by your clients is they found somebody better. It's a hard truth to take. Whether you've been doing this for a short time or a long time, some designers have more value to offer. They understand copywriting. They understand the science of marketing like I do. They may understand web design and SEO. They have more tools in their bag and they probably have better processes. So if you have a designer that you're going up against that has better processes, offers more value and can do it for a better price, you're gonna lose clients and you're gonna get fired. And so some people are looking for partners, not just providers, and those people are the good clients. And so if those good clients are looking for partners that can offer more value to them and they can do it at for the same price or close to the same price or even less, you're gonna lose clients to that. So it's time for you to start thinking about sharpening your ax, becoming better at your job beyond just graphic design. I really want you to think about this because if you're doing a design for somebody and your ego is getting in the way and they're asking for something simple and you think that you're right and they're wrong because you have more experience as a designer, well, at the end of the day, it's about making the client happy. And if, if you don't make the client happy and it's more important for you to satisfy your ego, you're gonna lose that client. They're gonna fire you. And then you're not gonna have a client to perform for. You're not gonna have a client to work for. And what good is that? The whole point of this is to keep busy, to make money, to doing what you love to do. So you wanna make sure you're not finding bad clients, you wanna make sure that you're setting those expectations, that you're communicating properly, and you're not chasing down bad clients, and you're not letting your ego get in the way of actually satisfying your client and building that relationship. The relationship should come first, and you wanna make sure that that person is happy. So these are the five tips that I wanted to give you guys today on why you're getting fired by your clients and things that you can do to slow that down. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please, if this offered value, hit that subscribe button. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. I'm Adrian Boysell, and as always, keep looking up.